I don't run up steps like I used to. <laughs> I guess three, three score and ten changes that. <laughs> By reason of strength, maybe I can keep on going up steps up. Have it as hard as to do God's will. Amen. It's been said I rather uh, die out in the heat away than say I forgot. Then rushed out for the death. Where out for Jesus? I couldn't think of the right word there. And I would have rushed out to the devil. Well, I definitely do have a desire for many years just to wear out on Jesus' will. Don't have a desire to stop. I just want to drive this old body. <laughs> it just wears out. And uh, then I'll go get to be with Him. And uh, so I don't have a desire to escape the world down here as long as I'm needed in the world. Uh, I notice that most of the time when we want to escape is when things are going bad. I said before, back when my son and I used to freak fish a lot, when I, we were heading to Sutton Lake before daylight and going up the road, I really wasn't praying, Lord, just take me home. My prayer was, Lord, let me catch one more fish than John. <laughs> Sometimes he answered. <laughs> so, but when things get rough, sometimes we just want to get older. Sometimes when we get old, we just want to go on. God made it that way. Amen. But I have a desire. I like what Paul said. I want to be here as long as he needs me. Don't really want to stay one day longer than what he wants me. Don't want to go one day before. I really just want to go when he did. Yeah. Now on the clear side of me, the funny side I guess is I'm going to be there forever while I rush getting there. <laughs> it's like at McDonald's, they say, sorry, it took a little while to get the coffee. I said, I'm going to be here in the next couple of hours. I'm not worried that it takes you another minute to make a new pot of coffee. <laughs> Look at Psalms 119. Appreciate Larry and Jean being with us. Appreciate all of you appreciate Larry saying Daniel coming tonight and uh, appreciate all that God has done, all the friends. Almost every time I pray, I thank the Lord for my friends that gave us their self and time to pray for me. Yes. And I may also pray for them in their need. Sure. Larry saying, I quote Hubert Woods all the time on that. We all need one another. Even have one another, it's not always easy. That's right. Lord didn't say it'd be easy, but he did say, I'll go with you all the way. Amen. To Amen. the end of the world. Love our brother Hubert say that many times. The Lord took him and his wife home now. He was one of my heroes of faith. Amen. A hero, a hero. Amen. Hubert was. Yes. He took me under his wing when I first started preaching 40, over 40 years ago. And, and he's just always a great friend. Yes. I always loved Hubert. Look at Psalms 119. Look at Psalms 119. Beginning in verse 9. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. The Bible readers will read a sign of relief. I'm going to read one section of Psalms 119. The second section. Uh, for the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. I'll explain that in a second. 119 begins in verse 9. And there'll be eight verses in this section. So there's eight verses in every section. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed are thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I desired all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and have 
respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. May be seated, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your life and mercy. We thank you all for your great greatness. Thank you, Lord, for thy wonderful Holy Spirit, God, that we fell in your house tonight. God, for the handshake, the hugs, the smiles, and God, the laughter and the prayers. God, we thank you that we can come together in one mind and one accord, having a desire, Lord, to glorify your precious holy name. So we thank you, Lord, for the word in song. We thank you, Lord, for the word in testimony. We thank you, Lord, for the word in prayer. Oh, Lord God, now we ask you may give the word uh, in message. Uh, so we always ask God that you anoint physically uh, that we may preach the word of God in the strength of the flesh. Uh, but the oh Lord God anoint spiritually. Yeah. You may preach thy word uh, in the power of the Spirit, tying together uh, the loose ends of filling the void we leave uh, because of our inability. Let thy word go out freely. Uh, let your name be lifted up. Uh, let your name be praised. Uh, uh, God, give us help uh, and comfort and peace, uh, instructions, uh, commandments. Uh, God, whatever it may be, uh, rebuking, uh, whatever it may be, God, that we may move closer to thee. In thy name we ask that Jesus. Dear Jesus, the Lord, amen. 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 From this, if I do a, a pick one, I, I, I guess uh, the message may come from, but thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What a beautiful scripture. Right? Very familiar scripture of Psalm 19. That one verse is very familiar. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against sin. Why do I want to preach on just for a time? Yet? Having a desire not to sin. Having a desire not to sin. Now we didn't have a desire to live good. We didn't have a desire to work for God. We didn't have a desire to glorify and all those things are good. But we also need to have a desire not to sin. We need to have a desire that everything we do, however little or however small it may be, amen, that we desire not to sin or to do something that be against God's will, whatever it may be. Where you're putting your high beam going and say, there, I'm blind to you too, amen. That is probably not blessed by God when you do that. Yeah, he's probably not up there saying, Way to go, Clarence. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it probably not when you believe. Now, I don't do that. I've been a preacher for a lot of years. You put your highlights on me, I'm going to leave my law. I want one of us to see. And since I can't see, the last thing I want to do is blind you. That's kind of dumb, I think. <laughs> kind of dumb. I got him. I blind him. You dummy. <laughs> I want to have a desire not to sin. I want to feel bad if I do that. Yeah. I want to have a desire not to sin. If someone pulls out a ring, I don't want to blow my head on and shake my bed. I want to have a desire not to sin. I want to feel bad. I want to feel the condemnation of God if I do things against God's precious only word. Not just the big thing, the little thing. I want to have a desire not to sin. Amen. Amen. How true. I feel they'll keep me walking better. Amen. That's I feel right. they'll keep me walking better. Amen. I tell people all the time, I like the rules of God. I don't have problem with the rules of God. I, I don't have problem praying for my enemies I, or those that despitefully use me. Right. I have no problem Amen. with that. I, I don't have a problem I, I, with with getting even with someone. I, Amen. It's not to me. I, they've done any wrong. If you want to get biblical, I, if someone does something wrong, I, I tell one of God's people, I, Amen, it's Christ. They're doing it too. That's right. As much you give them, you did it on me. I gave them a drink of water in my name. Sure. I was in prison. As much you did it on, on to them, you did it on me. He's my brother. So that's why they let God take care of it. Amen. I, I have no problem with forgiveness. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. I, I have no problem with forgiveness. Hey, I, I want to forgive. I want to do God's will. I want to not sin. Amen. He said, Clarence, forgive. Christians don't I don't have any problem with it because, first of all, he makes it pretty strong. He said, Clarence, forgive, and I'll forgive you. That's right. He said, now, if you don't forgive, then I'll forgive you. That pretty well explains it to me. 
Amen. Say, so, I, I, I want to forgive. So heaven's desire not to sin. Now, Psalm 119, in case you don't know this, I'll tell you, it's rather an amazing piece of literature. It's amazing people look. There's 22 alphabet in the Hebrew alphabet, 22 characters. Psalm 119. Now you can't see this in the English translation. And obviously I don't know Hebrew. Uh, you all probably thought, well, he probably knows Hebrew. Yeah, right. I can't even speak English. Amen. <laughs> I have trouble with regular English. Uh, English. Amen. Uh, uh, so uh, I begin with A. Uh, and it has uh, in the Hebrew, uh, each, each, uh, each of the eight verses uh, will begin with A. Uh, or B or C or D. Uh, it can compare each of the eight verses. So it's kind of amazing. And the Bible does that in Jeremiah in different places. It does that. But this was kind of amazing. Eight verses. And then there's 22 letters, so that's 176 verses. That's why there's 176 verses. And also, except for verses 1 through 3, and I think 119, is addressed to the Lord. Everything's addressed to the Lord. From verse 4 all the way down through, except for 119. Is addressed to the Lord. Now the psalmist also uses ten different words for the law of God. And every verse except three of them talks about the laws of God. So every verse except three is addressed to God. Every verse except three I use about ten different words to talk about the laws of God. Let's look at it in what we just read. Huh? Where all shall a young man cleanse the way by taking heed of everyone to thy word? Thy word. Talking to God. Thy and word. Talking about the law. With my whole heart I have sought thee. Oh, let me not wonder for thy commandments. Talking about the laws of God. Thy word. Talking to God, talking about the word. Have I hid my heart that I might not say it? Blessed are thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Yes. With my lips that I desire, O judgment of thy judgments, in that case, the law of God. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies. Talking about the law of God, talking to God. As much as in the law of riches, I will meditate on thy precepts, the laws of God. And have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I, I will not forget thy word. Every verse, except three, addresses God to God. Every verse, except three, amen. I, I talk about the laws of God. Now you will remember all that. We'll forget that. You will and I will. All I want you to remember, uh, Psalm 119 is a very high form of praise and poetry. In Hebrew, very high form, pretty amazing. Amen. If I assign you the job is Blessing. take A, B, and C and write eight verses each one, each thing beginning with the real A, A and the next, and it'd be pretty tough. Mm -hmm. It's a high form of writing. I like that. Amen. I like that. Now, so I know you won't remember, but remember how precious Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. Amen. So, go back to the verses. Uh, he said, I have thy word of thy in my heart, that I might not sin against me. <clears throat> Verse 9. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way uh, by taking heed therefore, uh, unto according to thy word. Uh, amen. Uh, cleaning oneself, they cleanse you between you and your neighbor. I can clean myself up talking about how I act and how I speak. And between me and Daniel, between me and my neighbor, I, I can clean myself up. He's a good person. Huh? Amen. Huh? He's a good person. Huh? Hey, you got to remember, huh? it's not this body, no matter how clean you clean this body, this is not the body that's going to heaven. Therefore, you cannot make yourself clean huh, to get to heaven. Amen. That's not the body of going. This body goes away. This body decays. This body's forgotten. This body washes away. This body's ain't enough. This body is all. All kinds of things are burned up. All kinds of things. It's not this body. So no matter how good you make this body, that's right. It's not the body that goes to heaven. No. The only body that goes to heaven is one that Christ creates. Within yes. you. For the new man, which every godly created righteousness and true holiness. 
Yes, the new man within you. Uh, William said, we give Christ, uh, we give this new man, uh, we give him uh, a place to live within us. Uh, that new creature within us. We provide a place for him to live. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, when I die, he has no place to live in this body of earth. So he goes back to be with God. Now a resurrection, he makes me a new body. Uh, now he has a place to live again. Uh, in a new body. But this body doesn't go. Uh, this body stays. I can't make this body good enough. Amen. Because it's That's right. Amen. Not when it goes. Sin condemned. That's why we have to have God. Only the body he makes. Amen. Only the body he makes. Amen. I said the other night, everybody talks about going to heaven. Uh, amen. Die. I think uh, what we're leaving out is judgment. You have to understand you don't go straight from here. Uh, amen. Your name has to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, amen. Hey, uh, and however you look at whatever doctrine you have, there's still a time you have to go through God allowing you to be in heaven because your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. And I'm not going to fight with you, argue, fight with you, argue with you on whether it's immediately after death, amen, or at the resurrection. I, I'm not going to argue. I don't want to miss the main issue. The main issue. Yeah. I, it's a poor young man who wants to die after this judgment. I, amen. I don't care if you want to put it immediately I, or at the a general resurrection. I, there's still a judgment to go through. Understand that. Let's not forget that. Amen. Amen. So amen. we clean ourselves up. But we have to take heed, amen, uh, to cleanse yourself before God. Uh, we have to take heed uh, uh, to His Word. Uh, hey, we have to take heed uh, uh, to His statutes. Uh, we got to have that desire not to sin. Uh, amen. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, uh, in the fifth chapter, uh, He said, well, uh, well, I better not start there. Why submit yourself to your own husbands? <laughs> <laughs> Or sort of, we're not afraid to read the Bible. I wasn't going to start there, but it just popped out at me. <laughs> Y'all don't mind if I just read out the word, do you? <laughs> That's all they are. As unto the Lord. Amen. For the husband of the head of the wife of the Christ, I read this. If I marry you, if I was born there, I thought I'd marry you. <laughs> well, if I marry you, I might read this too. But <laughs> for the husband of the head of the wife, even if Christ is head of the church. If I do a wedding, you'll have an option. <laughs> You're going to hear this. And he'll save your body. Therefore, the church suffers in Christ, so let the wife be your own husband. Husbands, love your wife. He's not one side. No. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ, Christ also loved the church. The church. Yeah. That's right. That makes that a whole lot different. Yes, it does. They made Amen. Him a supreme being. Amen. I'm glad for the grace that God shows us in His church. Amen. Husband, even if Christ loved and gave me a for it. Now, actually, they just, whatever, well, I'm going to read verse 26. That you might sanctify and cleanse it from the washing of the water by the word. Talking about the church of Christ. True. That he may present it to himself a glorious church. Uh, not have any spot or wrinkle uh, or any such thing. Uh, but that it should be holy uh, without blemish. Uh, amen. Uh, and then uh, go on. So uh, men love their wives and their own mother. He loved his life, loved himself. Amen. That amen. makes a whole world of difference. And I'll always introduce that by this is a relationship between a husband and wife in a Christian marriage. Amen. The way I say that. Amen. And I always tell them the only guarantee, amen, to have that love amen. is to personally know God in your amen. hearts. That's the amen. guarantee of the amen. love of God. To personally amen. have the love of God sure. in your heart. When I marry your birdie, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Amen. <laughs> One way or another, amen. I'm going to tell those that are in the audience about Jesus. I'm married. Hey, I've had two or three funerals in the last week. Hey, I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. So we find this. And we find in the book of Hebrews. So we find that we to, Christ wants to present us spotless. Amen. He wants us to have a white robe. I like white uh, robes. Uh, I don't own a white shirt. Uh, I'm a preacher that don't own a white shirt. Uh, and don't buy me one. <laughs> I'm not asking for one. I won't wear one if you get it. Bless him. Like I told you, I explained why I don't buy a white shirt. You all know why I don't buy them, right? Okay, I won't explain that. Same cost, I get caught. Why would I buy white? 
Hebrews 10. <laughs> I heard that there. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 10, beginning verse 19. Have you therefore, brethren, bold to sin in the holiness by the blood of Jesus? Amen. Now, in the Old Testament, what happened is you entered in not dressed right, not without the right blood, the right sequence. The Bible makes it very plain. He was slain. The high priest only allowed to go in once a year, not without blood. And he went in. I know over the time, about three times, a different ways. Now, people used to say they had a rope tied around his ankle or foot so he died they could pull him out. I'm not going to say he didn't do that, but there's nothing in the Bible that says that. Right. No. We assume since they could die in there, nobody else can go in. So somebody probably came up with the idea, well, they might have died. Either way, there's nothing that says in the Bible. So it's okay if you want to say, I wonder if they did. If you want to say, I heard they did. But understand, it's not in the Bible that they did. Okay? That don't make you right or wrong. I mean, don't make it simple. But it's not in the Bible. I just want you to know that. It's like it's not in the Bible. Catch us in the depths of the sea. Never to be remembered against you anymore. It said it catch in the depths of the sea in the book of Micah. But it doesn't have never to be remembered against you anymore. By definition, we can find it. But it doesn't say that in that verse. Right. Just for tribute's sake. Right. Amen. Micah. The Hebrews. So what I said is. That's in. Boldness to enter. We know we can enter into the holies of holy. We teach that. The bell and the temple were written in twain from the top to the bottom. We know we have the privilege. I man or woman. I, amen. I, Jew or Greek, bond or free. I, hey, I, a boy or girl or whatever. I, young and old has the ability to enter into the holies of holy and present our case before God. I, and it doesn't have to be just once a year. Although the clients wants me to say, some people think it must be once a year. No, I'm not. <laughs> I will do that for you. I'm sorry, I'm born with Clarence in me, okay? At least it's once a year. Yeah, that's right. I'm, I never jump in by you coming to church, but it's only once a year or what? I'm glad I have you. Amen. 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 And I used to warn Reaver, don't you dare jump on somebody to, and get up and say, oh, it's each. I'm glad you all came out. Don't ever. I want to see people in the house of God. Amen. If it's sure. Easter, bring the I say, praise the Lord for Easter. If it's Christmas, bring them out or a Christmas play. I say praise the Lord for that. Huh? Amen. Huh? If it's a special singing group, huh? we all want to come out for a special singing group and we're glad they do it. That's why we do it. So they may come out. Then we jump over and come out of the issue. You big dummies. It don't even make any sense what you say. Okay. You can say it a different way, but kind of more effective that way. So I want people to come to the house of God. Sure. I can just say the same verse 25, not forsaking ourselves to the assembly. Now, forsaking don't mean you're sick and couldn't go. Forsaking don't mean you're in the hospital and don't go. Forsaking mean because of something family matters. You can't go. Everybody doesn't have the same freedom. Amen. Larry and Jean had a lot more freedom to go to the house of God than Sandy and Lillian does. That's the way it is. Life is that way. I, you know, that's, that's the way life is. And, uh, but we're not forsaken. But anyway, and, and I'm going to enter into the Holy of the Holy. I want to enter in boldness. Uh, amen. I, I don't want to enter in his box of my clothing. Uh, uh, the high priest had to have uh, the right clothing. Uh, he had to have the right blood. He had to have the right sequence. He had to do it right. Hey, I, I believe I still need to do it right. Uh, but I want the boldness. I uh, didn't know that amen. God is there. Amen. Amen. Yes. If I enter in. True. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith and our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience, our body washed with the pure water. Amen. Having a desire not to sin. Hey, I want to have that great desire not to sin. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, finding the treasure, uh, uh, when we found Him, uh, amen, uh, and thy word have I hid in my heart that I not sin against God. Uh, the word in there hid, uh, oh, this treasure, uh, I treasure His word. Uh, I love His word. Uh, I honor His word. Uh, it is so precious to me. That's why I want everybody to know His word. Uh, I want you to know more and more about Jesus because I still desire to know more more and more about you. It's a wonderful treasure. Amen. Amen. What a treasure Amen. we have in Amen. the Word of God. 
What a blessing we have in the Word of God. Amen. And the Bible makes it very clear through Jesus' teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. I want my treasure. I be on heavenly treasures. Yes. Absolutely. So I want my treasure. Absolutely. Moses was saying what it says about Moses in Hebrews 11. He esteemed, he esteemed the reproaches of Christ. Not even the blessing. Not, he didn't say the blessing. Not, he didn't say the eternal life promise. Not, he didn't say all the things that God gives him. Not, he said, I esteem. Not, he esteemed not, the reproach. Not, amen. Far greater riches. Not, oh, uh, and then all of Egypt. Not, uh, greater riches. Not, and then the uh, riches and the treasure in Egypt. Not, and that's just the reproach of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Surely we ought to esteem the blessings of Christ. Yes. Like I said before, church there in teaching last night on the evolution, and, and I said, why would I care if somebody laughs at me because I believe in a young earth? I believe, it's exactly like the Bible says in Genesis, I believe the age the Bible gives. I believe it's exactly like that. I don't worry about lining up with science. Have you ever known science to be wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever known the medical field to be long wrong? Now, uh, one doctor, one time, one uh, medical field that went through one uh, uh, one of the uh, universities they went to, and uh, one of the professors one time said, whatever we teach you, 50% of us is wrong. And we don't know which 50%. Being quite honest, in my time, there's a lot of things change that doctors used to do, they don't do, or they do now, they don't do. That's right. Amen. There's a lot of methods of a lot of things. Used to be you have a surgery. Huh? Amen. If you had, if they did they give, they give a minor surgery, lay in bed, don't move for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Now they put a new hip in you at 8 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock. Let's get up and walk down the hall. <laughs> what? <laughs> but they, they know, they change. What's good for you? What's not good for you? Don't. I remember a while back they said, "Don't anybody, don't, don't look at milk, don't drink milk, don't even touch milk." Amen. Don't eat an egg. My grandpa ate two eggs every morning for ninety years. <laughs> and he dipped the bits biscuit in meat grease. <laughs> was his favorite dessert. I remember many times up there in summer, I, I, the old folk, my grandma, I, they made a cook on wood stove. There was a bowl of meat grease. You call it meat grease, I guess, is whatever grease comes out of meat. Not just bacon, bacon sauce, whatever, meat grease. Hey, Merle, bring me some of that meat grease. <laughs> Dump that in the sauce. That piss. <laughs> big old onion about that big. You killed him at night. <laughs> and they uh, drink out of the same dipper every day. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, but we change back and forth. Uh, amen. We change uh, all the time. Uh, hey, I don't worry about where I line up with science. They've done all kinds of dumb things. Yes. Amen. They used to bleed you real good. You're sick. Oh, okay. Don't do that. Bleed you. Now you'll be okay. <laughs> so. I'm going to worry about them laughing at me and their track record. <laughs> I don't think so. I think the track record of the Bible is pretty good. Amen. Amen. It says the life's in the blood thousands of years before science discovered that life is in the blood. Amen. It says the mountains and the depths of the sea before science ever endeavored. It says the heaven was spread itself like a curtain before science. Uh, every figure that the universe uh, is expanding. Uh, amen. It said the way of air uh, before anybody knew air weighed anything. Uh, it said all kinds of things. Uh, amen. Before uh, the world, he said hang the world on nothing. It said all kinds of things before science found out. Amen. And it's been true in every aspect. <coughs> sure. So, how many desire not sin? We're going to close very shortly. Bless you. Now, Luke 18 gives a story about the man went up to pray, and he said, I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all I possess. And that's what their thing they did then. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other man went up, said, Enough, look up, have mercy on me, a sinner. Christ said, This man went just five. You see, when you trust in yourself for righteousness, the Bible warns that. The Samaritan, 
when he asked the, the Lord, he asked him about uh, who's your neighbor. He said, oh, they may justify himself. Amen. So many people, so many church people want to justify themselves. I have no reason not to want to justify myself. I, I just want to justify what the Word of God said. I, I have a desire not to sin. Amen. And justifying myself comes under sin. I, amen. I have a desire I, I to learn more and more about Jesus. I, I, when I begin to say, look why I am because of what I've done. I'm getting on the sin side. That's right. Hey, so look what I've done. Hey, if you want to look at the Pharisees, remember they're the bad ones. <laughs> That's right. But if you compare their life to ours, we look in shambles compared to what they did, their sacrifices. Yep. We would. He was absolutely right. Jesus didn't question him when he said, I fast twice a week. And it'd be hard for me to convince you I fast twice a week. <laughs> I might want to make any eye contact. Yeah, no. <laughs> I will make this statement. Now when you're trusting yourself for righteousness, you usually think of yourself as better because of something you do that others don't. That's right. Or something you don't that others do. Mm -hmm. I'm better God wear long sleeves. I'm better if I don't go to this place to eat. But I'm better because it's not about comparing yourself to one another. If you have a desire not to sin, the first thing you don't do is compare yourself one to another. Because the Bible said hey, we comparing ourselves among ourselves is not wise. That's right. The Bible Amen. makes it very clear. Amen. Amen. I, hey, it's not about me. Compared to me, you may be a pretty good fella. Right? Amen. I, or a pretty good sister. Right? You may be really good. I, I compare to somebody else. Amen. But compare to your neighbor. Or compare to somebody else. But it's not about you compare. It's about when we compare ourselves to the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now I say, oh my, Lord, thank you for your mercy. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for your life. It's not about being better. It's about not sinning. It's not about who God thinks has the golden star the most. It's not about who God thinks the most talented. It's not about any of that. No. It's about not sinning. It's about keeping yourself on spotted from the world. It's about loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second life going to do that. Love thy neighbor as thyself. On Amen. these two commandments, you're all the love of the brother. It's about walking in the light. It's about loving your brother. It's about forgiving your enemy. It's about not saying the wrong thing. It's about not thinking the wrong thing. It's about Amen. not doing the wrong thing. It's about Amen. not doing right. All these things. It's about not sinning. Amen. My grandma is like my mom. I would never heard mom raise her voice. I one. Now I've said this before. Now, if I was your child, you would have every right to raise your voice. <laughs> if you raised me. Trust me on that one. <laughs> my mom never raised her voice. She never shouts. I haven't heard her testify but a handful of times. But she's one of the most rock solid people. I know you. I can tell you everything bad. I know I'm right in full bit. I don't know anything. Never heard her say anything out. Never hear Just don't know. Her mom was like that too. Her mom used to say about, her mom would say in a whisper, Oh, it's hard enough for me to keep my own front doorstep clean and still worry about the neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Good advice. That's right. Having a desire enough to sin. Amen. It's about my walk with God. David, when he sinned, clean me, O oh Lord. Yes. And plainly restoring to me the joy of thy salvation. He said another thing, let me get that thought, about the joy. In, if you're you're probably you've had a joy because of somebody else's failure. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> when Christ saw the failure, let me get by one day. When Christ saw the failure of Jerusalem, he came into the city. And he looked over the city yeah. and he wept. 
He didn't see the joy. Ah, it's going to come to you. It's going to come to you in 42 years. He said the wrong words of 42 years later. He wept over the city. Amen. David said this. First me in Psalm 51. First me the husband, and I shall be clean. Wash me. I shall be white or something. This is after sin. That's right. This is after David's sin. If you look at the heading on Psalm 51, you'll say to the chief musician of Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came on unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba, <coughs> after his sin, David begins to repent. Make me to hear joy and glad. Oh, I love that. People sit in church and sour all the time. <laughs> look like they've been sucking on lemons the whole time, I think. David said, make you hear joy and gladness. Are you not hearing the joy? Are you not hearing the gladness? Are you not hearing the blessings of God? Amen. Doesn't something stir up in you and say, hey, that felt rather good. Amen. Enjoy. Make to me you hear thy joy and thy gladness. Hey, I want to hear the joy of the Lord. I want to hear the gladness of the Lord. I want a soul to touch me. Amen. I want a testimony to touch me. I want a message Amen. to touch me. Touch me. I, I want to just sing you. Amen. Amen. Make me feel blessed. Blessing, Lord. I really do. Blessing. So some people don't make me feel blessed when they see me. They pretend like they didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let me. They always talk to somebody right before you go and shake hands. Hey, David. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. One thing you can't fool me hard is people hard to fool me. I just let it go, but it's hard to fool me. But they entertain me a lot of times. I'm sorry, but they do. I, I guess that's why I stay happy. That the bone without a broken may rejoice. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit. This is David. Absolutely. Restore me the joy of thy salvation. Now, David was an amazing person as we close. He wrote like he was living under grace. He didn't write like any other Old Testament writer. That's right. That's right. David was completely different. Yes. He's completely different how he writes. Nobody else say restore on me the joy of my salvation. And the way David was set and repent like David repent, he repented just like we can under grace. This is amazing, David. Amen. 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 The joy of thy salvation. He talked about living under the law. Amen. The joy of thy salvation. Cleanse me. Yes. Oh Lord. Not high preaching. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. Oh. So, I have the desire not to sin. And if I sin the least little, some little thing, yeah. I want to feel condemned. Amen. Sure. I don't want to wear out my condemner switch. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Despise not to check. I don't want to wear that out. I want to feel condemned. I want to. Oh, I don't want to sin. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We love you. Blessing, Lord. And we pray, God, you may thank take the you, message Lord. and apply it to our hearts. Lord God, that we'll have a desire not to sin. Not only is a desire to serve you, but we'll have a desire not to sin. That we have a desire, Lord, not to think of ourselves high or above. We compare ourselves to you, Lord. We know, oh my Lord, give me mercy and give me grace. Let me do thy precious holy will. Lord, when I sin, I want to be condemned. The Bible makes it very plain that you will condemn us. If we're a child and all mine, if I don't feel the condemnation, there's something going wrong with my end. Yes. So your laws, yes. your rules hasn't changed. So we love you. How true. In thy name we ask you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.